the man who tried to stab Lee Zeldin last night with a bladed weapon during a campaign stop was released from jail within hours of his arrest on a felony charge, just as Zeldin had predicted. Let's welcome, on our guest line, Congressman Lee Zeldin to the Mike Gallagher Show. First of all, Congressman, I am so grateful for the actions of of those who are near you and your quick-thinking actions there, but for the grace of God, uh, this guy didn't uh, have an opportunity to put the blade into your body. You must be feeling very, very, very grateful to that today. Absolutely. There were men and women who instinctively jumped on the guy to subdue him instantly. I mean, really good instincts by a number of attendees who were there. Uh, fortunately, I, I saw him coming at me with that weapon in his hand. It was, he was lunging towards my neck area, and I just grabbed his wrist to hold him back uh, for what was just a few moments until everyone got in, and the law enforcement was there within a few minutes, and and he was apprehended and, and gone, although, as you just pointed out, it was just within hours after he tried to stab a sitting member of Congress at a political campaign event charged with a felony and instantly released due to New York's cashless bail laws, which is crazy. It's beyond crazy. I would never have believed it. I, I Honest to goodness, Congressman, I'm sitting here. I'm not kidding you. I, I, I admire you and respect you and certainly support your candidacy. And when I saw your tweet, well, he'll be released, you know, on, on New York's... I don't think people understand this. And this is not just New York. This isn't just a New York thing. It's happening and it happens in states all over the country where these ridiculous no bail laws have been instituted by Democrat politicians and Soros installed prosecutors and district attorneys. I, I, I have to tell you, I was shocked at your tweet and I'm dismayed that you were right. I can't pull. I still I'm, I'm in shock. This guy's out. I, and I, I wish I was. I wish that I wasn't right and that there was, and this guy, the attacker himself needed help. I mean, I, I was told that he was a veteran. Maybe he came home with the mental wounds of war. I heard that he was a little under the influence. Maybe he needed some help to deal with that. You're not helping that person by putting them right back on the street. There are people like, while you're processing somebody for an arrest and you identify that there's a mental health issue, maybe there's a drug addiction issue, you can assist that person. Now, on a whole other level is the need to be weighing dangerousness, to look at flight risk and past criminal records and seriousness of the offense, to make sure that if that this individual was released, that there's some potential additional harm that might get caused, and a judge would have the discretion to be able to effectively, proactively avoid that by keeping that person behind bars. There is zero discretion whatsoever in New York under this charge, it's one of too many different uh, non-bail eligible offenses, and he's released. And the person who actually, in my opinion, the person who ends up suffering the most because he gets released is that attacker. Yeah, but 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 not for nothing. And I appreciate your compassion. And I and obviously, there's a lot of people in the streets of America who are violent, but they're also mentally ill. They have they're veterans. They're homeless. What they're alcoholics. They're they're drug addicts. I worry about the safety and protection of people like you. Don't you have a concern that that your safety has been compromised? Couldn't he come back at you again? Yeah, so th- this is that I would say that that huge dynamic of this issue where you need to give judges discretion to look at those other factors like right. dangerousness and flight risk and past criminal records, seriousness of the offense. So here in New York, we have had people get released on cashless bail and then go murder other people. Connie Torrey was a 93-year-old in Syracuse, murdered by somebody released on cashless bail. Somebody else gets released on an arson and then gets rearrested on a double manslaughter. After they were released on cashless bail, people are robbing a bank, getting released the same exact day, looking up the sky, smiling, laughing at the system, and then going out and robbing additional banks that day. So Kathy Hochul says that there's no data to support overhauling New York's cashless bail law. And I say, if you need data, you should go look at all the press clippings sitting there on your desk, count them up, and use that number as your data. You have Alvin Bragg charging Jose Alba with a murder, putting him in Rikers Island with an open stab wound and not charging the person who 
attack him and ask him for hundreds of thousands of dollars, I would remove Alvin Bragg as my first action on day one. Kathy Hochul says, cut him some slack. He just got there. He's doing his job. So there is an issue here in New York where crime and public safety is being eroded. Our law enforcement is not being supported. And one party Democrat rule are looking for more ways to purposefully make it even worse. And we are reminded by the events of last night and this person being released exactly why we need to win this race and restore balance because we have to repeal cashless bail. And this guy who attacked me last night would not have been released in the middle of the night as he was. Congressman Lee Zeldin is our guest. He's represented New York's first congressional district since 2015. He's running for governor in New York. He survived an attack last night in New York, uh, a guy with a blade jumping the stage. Uh, Incidentally, I hope you're going to take a a long, hard look at your security going forward. I mean, a lot of people were asking me when when we saw this shocking video, uh, the guy just kind of strolled up on stage. Congressman, you need to be protected. Yeah, there was security there, but it clearly was not sufficient. I actually just finished my first rally of the morning, and we have rallies all day today, tomorrow, Sunday. The event that I was just at, uh, there was massively ramped up security, so that's great. Good. And, you know, Congressman, you said something. We have to connect the dots here. Uh, You have long promised that one of your first acts would be to fire this radical district attorney, this this Soros-installed radical Alvin Bragg. Uh, so to have somebody physically attack you, try to stab you, and then be immediately released on this cash, this these insane cashless bail programs or policies, uh, hey, connect the dots here. This is the reason you need to be elected governor. Yeah, there are many different issues right now of why the streets of New York are less safe. Part of it is a DA like Alvin Bragg refusing to enforce the law. The governor of the state of New York has the constitutional authority, and I would say the constitutional duty, to remove a DA who refuses to enforce the law. The enter in the Jose Alba case. There's another example of how bad of a job Bragg is doing. But he said on day one, he's not going to enforce all different kinds of laws across the board. I'll give you one more cashless bail example that just happened inside of Manhattan. You had two Mexican cartel drug smugglers who were arrested with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth. They were instantly released back out on the streets due to cashless bail. Now, the argument for cashless bail, the advocates say that you shouldn't have somebody locked up because the only reason is they can't afford any amount of bail whatsoever. I would argue that if somebody's busted with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth and you don't have money to post bail, you're a bad criminal. You're a bad businessman. You should have saved your money, but you could spend more time in jail. You should not be released. Well, I'm grateful that you're safe. Uh, I appreciate you joining us today. I know you're in the middle of a, of a whirlwind, and I am so thankful that the guy didn't succeed. Listen, it's real simple. New York voters have an opportunity to, to fix this crap, and and you're the answer. I mean, if, 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 if New Yorkers don't see this, and, and as blatant and as obvious as it is, there's no hope for them. So maybe New York voters are going to take a long, hard look at the last 24 hours and say, we need Lee Zeldin for governor of New York. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. We hope to have you you back soon. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah, thank you, Mike.